So I will, I will first say my, my kids are a little younger, so, so I think they dream of flying cars. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, so I'm afraid we're going to speak a little bit about this, because not so long ago, this was something, even I thought three, four, four years back, I thought this was something maybe my children would see. But, but actually, this is happening. And, and this is what I'd like to talk about is uh, urban air mobility. Is, is we, we discussed that this morning, Jim, and you said we need to understand a little bit where we're coming from. But what we're talking about, basically, is about vehicles flying people vertically in cities from, for, for example, downtown to an airport or point to point. And, and you ask me where this is coming from. And I think it comes from different things. First, it comes from a need. And the need is a simple one is we all know that uh, we're going to, I mean, urbanization is a very large phenomenon. I mean, we, we, we are more than half of the population now living in urban areas. Over the last 10 years, every single day, roughly 200,000 people moved from rural areas to urban ones. 200,000 people per day in average, imagine. So yes, the cities are growing bigger, but also what is growing bigger is the traffic, is the congestion of this traffic, is the traffic jam. And so we try to measure up what is the impact on economy. And last year in the US, people started to figure out and try to, to, to account for all the direct costs, the time loss, the fuel, but also all the indirect costs. And they came up with a bill of 300 billion per year in the US only last year. So it's, it's absolutely humongous. So when you talk about that type of money, people start to think about, about solution. But it's not only the US. We know that we have, for example, mega cities in China. We've got mega cities uh, everywhere. If you go to Sao Paulo, if you go to Jakarta, to Delhi, you spend hours and hours in traffic jam, and you'll, and you'll want a solution. And this has a cost in terms of time. This has a cost also in terms of environment. I mean, we know that the cities are responsible for roughly 70% of uh, the, green, the global greenhouse gas emission. And so we need to take that number down. Obviously, the electric car that uh, Francois was referring to are a solution. And we tend to believe that uh, there is another solution. Because if you look at cities today, it's clear that there's, there's very, very limited solution, I would say, on the surface. There's very limited solution below the surface. I mean, the subterranean uh, uh, around cities is, is, is also crowded. So we think what we need to do is really uh, uh, go for the third dimension. And, and because in the third dimension, by definition, is, is open, and, and, and we have all the space we, we, need, to do, we, we, need, to, we need to do to travel uh, people there. So once we say this, how close are we to, uh, to urban air mobility and to this dream of, uh, of flying around? Well, from a technological standpoint, we're not very far. We identified the blocks, and these blocks were not necessarily together. But now we know that more and more they're getting together. And, and the challenge for us is how can we make a, a totally safe, uh, create a totally safe environment for those technology to interact and develop that capabilities? One of the blocks will be the batteries and the electricity, having the autonomy, having the power. But this is not so far away. Thanks to the automotive industry at large, this is progressing very fast. We're very confident we're going to get there. There are some new, new technologies, uh, like the sense and avoid. We see that with drones today. We see more and more drones around us, and we see that they use this type of technologies, which are actually usable and, and scalable. And then we have automation. I mean. Uh, I cannot say I drove for 240 kilometers without touching my steering wheel, but um, actually aircraft have been landed uh, on full automatic since the 70s. Okay, you all flew aircraft, and these aircraft are landing very often in full automatic. When you have side wind of this type of thing, the, pilot, the pilots are instructed to actually uh, uh, land on full automatic. So uh, in, in the aviation business, automation is, is part of who we are for the past 40 years. And actually, it increases safety. And so it's something we really uh, believe also could benefit uh, at, at a very large scale. So you asked me, Jim, also uh, on saying, OK, so the technologies were not very far, but there may be many players. Well, actually, yes, there are many players. There are dozens of small startups, small or big. And, uh, and maybe you heard about Volocopter, about Ilium, about Ehang in China. What is interesting is these people raised last year only $400 million. Uber start to get into the game. Uh, Boeing just purchased a company named Aurora. Uh, 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 Augusta, Bell, the helicopters manufacturers, everybody getting into this game because we all start to believe it's not a dream, it's not something uh, that uh, our kids uh, could, could dream of or some or feature of the, a science fiction movie. It's something that will fly probably in the next five years. And it's, we start to scale up. 
It will take time, a little bit like the, the, like the car industry or aviation. It will take time, but again, in 10 years, 15 years, it'll be hopefully reasonably common. So what are the challenges to, 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 to get there? Again, we mentioned vehicles and the technology, but honestly, vehicles may not be actually the biggest difficulty. The difficulty is, is integrating all the technologies, not only on the vehicle, but on the ground, uh, in the space, work with the uh, authorities regulating traffic, uh, try to, to make sure that all of this is safe. Because again, safety is paramount uh, for all in, in the aviation business. When we, many of you flew here. When you flew in, you didn't ask yourself, uh, when you landed, you didn't ask yourself, I'm there safe. You thought, you know, was the I know, uh, in, in flight entertainment nice? Was the service good? Was the aircraft on time? Nobody asked anymore the question, is it safe to fly? And, and nobody asked this question because the whole industry has been working 50 years to make it happen. And so it's paramount that, yes, we have many startups, but we, I mean, uh, private companies and the authorities and the regulators and the governments, we need to make sure that this uh, safety uh, priority goes also into urban air mobility despite the rush to get there because technologically it is, it is feasible. So that is a big thing. Another issue will be, the, of course, the business model. Uh, how does that work? Are the cities paying for part of it? Is it only the users? Who's going to pay? How is it going to be paid? Is, is, obviously, is obviously a question. Another one, of course, is public acceptance. Are we today willing to go in an object with nobody at the steering wheel, which will take you 300 meters into the air, and fly you to the other end of the, of, of the city. So we did, a, we did a study in three continents and, uh, and tried to get uh, the, the opinion of people. And of course, it varies from one country to another, but mostly people really value uh, uh, time versus money. They need safety, and they need certainty. I mean, again, if you can say, wherever you are in Delhi, in, uh, again, in Sao Paulo, uh, or in Beijing, I can go to point A from point B, and I'm sure that it will take seven minutes, instead of I don't know if it will take 20 or two hours, 20 minutes or two hours. That, that has a great value in and by itself. So we believe, and public acceptance, thanks to the move in the automotive now, is getting about not being piloted, apparently is getting more and more buy-in, in particular with the younger generation. So again, the idea is to work together with the authorities, uh, with, with the cities and the governments to, uh, to, 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 to make it work. So uh, this will bring what type of benefit? Because uh, obviously what we, what we believe is one of the limits to the uh, extension of the cities are uh, that the center of the city is becoming very expensive and the time to commute is getting, uh, uh, I mean, it's becoming a barrier to, uh, to the development of the cities and the development of the economies. We believe this could be one of the solution. Again, it's certainly not the only one, but certainly could be part of the solution. Again, we believe it will start at a reasonably low number for really people traveling for business or very wealthy individuals, but very fast, which would be in a position to move on to make it more affordable as we, as we scale up, and it's really something we believe in. Um, then again, uh, what we believe in terms of investment, it will be reasonably limited. I mean, compared to building roads, building trains, here we're talking about only building uh, launch pads in cities. So it's very limited in terms of real estate, very limited in terms of investment, whereas actually, yes, it could contribute to the economy of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the cities. Uh, also, with the, we're talking about the internet and about, uh, uh, again, parcel, de parcel deliveries. And we believe, yes, also parcel deliveries by drones is something that's going to happen and develop uh, reasonably fast. So again, we, we believe this revolution is coming. We believe it's not a dream anymore. We believe it's something we work on. And actually, we, we do at Airbus have uh, two projects. Uh, one will fly next year, and one will fly in a couple of weeks. And so I, I couldn't resist uh, uh, to make some free advertising, sorry, uh, Thierry, and, and show you a little video with, uh, with, what, with the, uh, uh, the prototype that is going to fly in, uh, in the Silicon Valley uh, in, a coming, uh, I mean, in, in a couple of weeks. So if you can see the video, please. <laughs> 